we feel confident in passing the basically being better than human driving in about three months, basically Q2 of this year. If we feel confident of passing, having a probability of, of accident that is better than the, the average experienced driver. And then it'll keep going from there. Ultimately, I, I think it's going to be 10 times safer than a human driver. Right there. Did you catch what Elon just revealed? Tesla's full self-driving is going to surpass human safety levels within months, not years, months. And now something even bigger is happening behind the scenes. In that same interview, Elon dropped another bombshell. And for those who are short on time and don't like to watch full videos, let me give you the essential points here immediately. Tesla's approaching a historic milestone in the second quarter of this year. Well, NVIDIA's latest simulation technology is validating Tesla's entire roadmap. And what are the implications? We're looking at a potential market shift in insurance, ride sharing and robotics. And when two tech giants align their trajectories like this, the market impact is usually exponential. And those of us who hop on the bandwagon of this rally at the right moment, not too early, not too late, but at the right moment, are likely to reap massive, massive rewards. You might be thinking, well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? How do I find the right moment? Well, what if I told you that there was a rule book for that, that somebody essentially invented in the 70s, and it's been updated ever since by generations and generations of stock traders, and I happen to be one of the people who was taught it. Would you maybe want to know it? You'd be like, oh, he's not going to tell me that, is he? Or what if I told you I was going to tell you the whole thing, give you the whole secret, spill the beans, so to speak. Would you want to hear it? If the answer to that is yes. Go to felixfriends.org slash get free and watch the full masterclass that teaches you exactly that. And you will never look at a stock chart the same way again. And I promise you, if you take notes and you apply what I'm teaching you there, your life will never be the same again either. So big promise, go watch the masterclass. Thousands of you have already told me how insanely useful it is. And that's the whole point of this community. We want to make a million people financially free. Why? Because I think you deserve it. And I enjoy making an impact. That's the selfish side of me. It's very, very satisfying. Seriously, it's just the most fun thing I've ever done. And it makes retirement a heck of a lot easier and fulfilling. Now, what I'm about to share might change how you view the entire AI sector. Tesla and Nvidia aren't just pushing boundaries, they're literally rewriting the rules of what's possible in cars and robotics. And quick question, when was the last time you saw two competing technologies actually work together perfectly? Think about that as we explore what's happening here. You know what fascinates me? And maybe it'll fascinate you too. We've reached a point where AI has literally digested every piece of digital knowledge humanity has ever created, every book, every article, every research paper, fully absorbed. But here's what's actually mind-blowing. Both Tesla and NVIDIA have realized that just consuming existing knowledge isn't enough. They're taking a different approach that I haven't seen ever before. Now, Winston explained it to me. I asked him what this actually means. And he said to me, imagine if we could learn not just from actual walks and hikes we do together, but from millions of simulated hikes. That's exactly what's happening with these AI systems. Tesla and NVIDIA are creating their own training data through something called synthetic data generation. Think of it as AI teaching itself through imagination. Instead of waiting for real world scenarios, they're simulating millions of variations in virtual environments. For example, when Tesla's FSD encounters some complex intersection, it's not just learning from that one instance. It's, it's simultaneously running thousands of scenarios, different weather conditions, various vehicle behaviors, unexpected pedestrians, golden retrievers, all in a fraction of a second. And NVIDIA's Isaac Groot platform, that's one of the sillier names out there, takes it even further. They're creating entire virtual worlds where robots can practice tasks millions of times before touching a real object. It's like an infinite training ground. And if you drive a Tesla, have you noticed how Tesla's FSD has improved dramatically? Even in areas where the cars rarely drive, that's synthetic data at work. The AI is learning from scenarios it imagines and not just the real world experience. And it's a paradigm shift. It's going to accelerate AI development beyond what most investors realize 
And that's exactly the reason why I believe Elon Musk will deliver on his promise this time. And as a second promise he's put out, what if your car could understand you as naturally as a human passenger? Well, that's exactly what Tesla's Grok integration is bringing to cars. And it's going to change the way we interact with the very cars that we drive, or that will be driving us. And what makes this actually really groundbreaking is that Grok isn't another sort of voice assistant. It's actually learning again from real-time conversations on X and actual interactions in millions of Tesla vehicles. So imagine you're driving and you casually mention, I, I could use a coffee. And your Tesla not just understands it, but it checks real-time traffic, finds highly rated coffee shops along your route, and even tells you which ones have available parking. That's what's actually happening like right now. And think about the scale of Tesla's 7 million plus vehicles out there. Every time someone says, I'm cold or find me a supercharger, Grok learns not just from that specific interaction, but also generates thousands of synthetic variations to understand similar requests better. So it's like millions of real world test cases plus an infinite number of simulated scenarios happening like this. So your car is going to learn from your behavior. Your car will be your best friend. <laughs> Winston seems to disagree with that one, but you get the idea. So let's connect something here that most analysts and investors are missing. Remember how we discussed Grok's? Yeah, we just did, right? The same technology is also the foundation for Tesla's robotics program. Elon has announced plans to produce tens of thousands of Optimus robots in one to two years. Now, most people would dismiss this as some, you know, an ambitious Musk timeline. But here is what NVIDIA is doing here and why they're making this a reality. Remember how NVIDIA demonstrated how their Isaac Groot platform can simulate all these robotic interactions in, in virtual environments? It's not about quantity, it's about achieving human-like decision-making, which is what the humanoid robots need, right? Now, how many times would a robot need to practice, say, picking up a cup or something before they get it right? Well, it might take weeks, months, years, right? But in that NVIDIA simulated environment, they can do that millions of times, you know, in a very, very short period of time. So what does that mean? Well, it allows Tesla to get those robots up to speed way, way, way quicker. And what seemed like science fiction a few weeks ago, robots that can actually understand natural language commands and perform really difficult tasks physically, is now being validated by two independent technological paths. Tesla's real-world robotics program and NVIDIA's advanced simulation program. And it's not about who gets there first. It's about how these two programs actually validate each other and complement each other. So let's talk about what this means for your portfolio. Now, over the years of trading and investing, I've learned how to spot when things are about to converge and explode. And that's, in my humble opinion, what we're seeing here. So for Tesla, achieving safer than human autonomous driving isn't just about bragging rights. We're looking at a massive revenue stream that will eclipse the car sales. Think about it. Robo taxis, premium full self-driving subscriptions, and then specialized insurance products, all rolling out at the same time. So Tesla is creating layers of value here. Grok isn't just a fancy feature, it's a potentially monthly revenue stream that keeps customers in the ecosystem. And okay, some of that might go to XAI, some of that might go to Tesla. We have to figure out what the details are exactly, but it's generally going to be very good news for Tesla with no humans, 24 seven. And then we got robots. If Tesla can deliver on this mass production target that we're talking about now, it's no longer years away, it's happening in 2025. Think about how it's going to improve their own manufacturing for us. Think about healthcare, care for the elderly, household assistants, delivery robots, right? Self-driving vans, stick one of those guys in the back and they're going to be delivering parcels. And then we have NVIDIA's position here, which is equally compelling. Every company out there is going to want to develop autonomous systems or robots. And what are they going to do? How are they going to do it? Are they going to go the, the, the Tesla route and build 7 million robots because that's what those cars are now? No, of course not. They're going to go to NVIDIA and say, we need to simulate what we're doing here. Can we please use it? And how does Tesla fit into that? Well, Tesla is proving that these technologies work in the real world. And NVIDIA is basically sitting there and going, and we'll give the technology to you. So Tesla is actually paving the way here for NVIDIA to benefit massively because Tesla is showing that it's real. Regulators suddenly have a successful template. Investors have proof of concept and consumers have trust. So Tesla is the trailblazer and Nvidia will pick up 
a ton of the profit just behind. So how do we trade it? That's how we started, right? Let's look at the stock chart here in trade vision.io, which is the platform that we built. And you can see actually here under popular stocks, Tesla, NVIDIA is the third most popular stock by our, our users. NVIDIA is the fourth most, sorry, other way around. NVIDIA third, Tesla fourth. So let's look at NVIDIA first. And what's the point of trade vision? The point is to give you the best quality data you possibly could have, give you the same access to the same tools that Wall Street has access to. And one of the cool things on there, for example, is our support resistance lines. That's literally based on what the big boys, what the whole market's doing. It's, it's actual real positioning. So when we get to red resistance, we know that they have to sell. We go to green support, we know they have to buy and, and look at the chat. It works insanely well. So if we look at NVIDIA right now, and, and let me just take away the support resistance to take away as many things as possible. What, what did you see here? Let me get a pen for you so it's a little clearer. Well, we have that purple kind of downward line here, right? that I just put in there in, in, in green again. And what happened? Well, we broke out above it. Very nice rally up. Volume was increasing. That was kind of a good story down here. And then that horrible day kicked in where everybody got kicked in the nuts, which was basically the day that Jensen Huang gave a speech that was insanely powerful. And everybody woke up and said, I bought the rumor, let's just sell the news, whatever he said today. And, and, and they did. And, and that's a little bit of what's happening there. And plus the bond yields are going a little bit bananas and so on. But what do you also see? Click on MA down here and turn, bring in the 50-day moving average line. And that is the line that is, I think, the most important line. There are a few others, but this is one of the most important ones out there, that yellow line there. And what do you see? Well, we didn't, we stayed above it. In these four wobbly days and that's very important now right now as i'm recording this we're trading somewhat below it but that doesn't really matter pre-post market is fairly irrelevant so i want us to close above that line again which sits at about 140 right now so you want to close above 140 to maintain this momentum and if that doesn't happen well i think momentum will when eventually kick in with trump just business friendly less taxes less regulation it'll be good for ai that's my view on it. And then 19th of February, we get the next earnings out. So maybe we'll wobble sideways for a bit, but eventually we'll, we'll get to see the light on this. So I'm, I'm very bullish on NVIDIA. It's just that, you know, we go through these phases. I mean, look at, look at the rally we've had, right? It's just an insane rally. And what do you see? Rally, and the sort of people, some people call it the bull flag, rally flag. We actually went down a little bit here. We did a bit of this, this zigzag. And right now we're up here and we're doing the same kind of pattern again that we saw in March last year. So I'm not worried about it, but I'm also not saying this is the best entry point in the history of NVIDIA, though the stock has done basically nothing since June 2024. So it's really underperformed in the last six, seven months. And that could be an opportunity, right? It could be a real opportunity. If we go to Tesla, I'm going to open that as well. And that green thing there, that was a buy signal that we put out. We're about to launch also breakout signals, which means you know stocks that are likely to really massively outperform. That's coming up in, in the next coming coming days, really. I'm just testing it right now. It looks really good. It looks very, very good. Uh, what do you see with Tesla? Well, you see a similar pattern, don't you? You see these kind of rally sideways, right? Rally sideways, rally kind of sideways. And that's just how the market moves. So nothing goes up in a straight line. I actually increased my Tesla position uh, and, and I used options to do that uh, just, just yesterday. And um, is that a smart thing to do? Well, time will tell, but mine is a fairly low risk setup. Uh, so what do we need to see here? Well, put the support levels on again. Support right now sits at 375 here. And you see how that held very nicely. And resistance is at 420. So for the moment, we seem to be stuck in this kind of level. We're around the 400 mark here, a little bit below that. 420 is really the thing we need to break through. And how is that going to happen? Well, when Donald Trump comes in and he announces a federal regulation or autonomous driving and they set up the actual rules, and I imagine that Elon's got that one already drafted, then I think that will, will really catapult um, Tesla. And we're also going to start seeing the robo-taxis roll out this year in certain cities, certain areas in the US. And I would say almost at the same time, autonomous FSD will happen because it's the same regulation. Really. Like if you're allowing robo taxis without drivers, why wouldn't you allow the same technology in cars with drivers? Right? 
makes sense, doesn't it? So every Tesla out there is going to become a robo taxi. And think about this, there's 7 million Teslas out there. Not, they're not all in the US, obviously, but you know, there are millions on US roads. Uh, that is an interesting challenge to say Uber. <laughs> and either Uber will embrace this and will become the biggest buyer or the biggest manager, perhaps, of Tesla cars. Or Tesla is going to knock Uber out of the park. Uber is desperate to get his hands on these Teslas and the FSD and the autonomous and the robo-taxi. Desperate. So they will probably be the biggest client for the robo-taxis. But um, it'd be interesting to see how this rolls out because this is a huge, huge, huge revenue opportunity for Tesla to just take a cut of every paid journey, make it really easy for you to monetize your car. Cars, which have always been this example of, oh, you go and buy a new car, you drive it out of the, 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 the dealer or, you know, whatever, Tesla doesn't have dealers, but the same idea. And immediately you've lost, what, 50% of the value, right? Cars are just this horrible depreciating asset. And that's about to change. They're about to be a cash flow positive real asset that actually makes you money which is really crazy. And at the same time, depending on where you are in the US, it's a tax write-off, right? So this could, be, this could be really cool and it's going to make people buy more cars. And if the maths adds up, people are just going to buy 10 Tesla robo-taxis or 20 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 and run these massive taxi fleets and they'll be privately owned. And you might think, oh, that's never happened before. No, there are plenty of countries where the taxis are owned by private individuals. The licenses are owned by private individuals, investors or investment companies, and they run it for profit. And I think the same thing will happen here. So very bullish on Tesla, but chart at the moment is just a little bit like meh, meh, basically. So you could wait and hope and see, are we going to get that bounce off of the 50-day the moving average line here, that one, the yellow line there? And that, that, that might happen. I don't know if we'll go that low. The recent low is 375, which is where the support sits. So I think that's likely the near-term low, unless something really weird happens to jobs numbers or something, which I don't really see happening. So I'm bullish on both of these. I think these are one of the, probably two of the lower risk plays out there at the moment. And poor people are talking about all the stuff that's going on out there. Look at all the things people are, are searching here, Rigetti or Fubo or Soundhound or, you know, MicroStrategy, INQ. Those are all very, very high risk plays. D-Wave, I actually think that NVIDIA and Tesla here are, are, are some of the better plays out there. So I, I like them both. I will let you know if I add to my positions. Just uh, watch me and follow me. And what are you going to do now? Are you going to go away and go, oh, it was interesting. I'm going to go watch another video, kittens. Um, well, you could do. But you could also just spend the next 20 minutes of your life learning and becoming somebody you can not just read charts, but read breakouts before they happen and recharts so that you get out before stuff collapses and therefore you don't become that bag holder. You get rid of the frustrations and you just get to a place where you actually achieve the goals that you want to achieve financially. And I know money isn't everything. It doesn't bring you happiness in itself, but it's a heck of a lot happier to be happy when you have money. Because money is one of the biggest stresses in everybody's lives, right? What, what do couples fight about? A lot of the time it's money. And money can solve almost, almost everything. Not quite everything, but it can solve almost all problems. Um, if you can chuck money at the problem, it's usually much, much easier. And it just, yeah, it just makes it makes life easier and fun. And I've kind of experienced both sides of that, of that coin. I'm very happy to be on this one. And that's why I love sharing it. So check it out. Felix slash get free. If you got some value out of this video or the masterclass, also share it with a friend. And I wish you all the best. Take care. Come on in here. Come on in. <laughs> Felix here. I know a lot of you are worried about SoFi and the doom and collapse that was caused by a downgrade that hit the stock yesterday. And as I'm always very bullish on SoFi, I thought I'd run you through what it actually means, what I'm doing and also some lessons we can learn from this. So I'm traveling here, but I thought I'd record a quick one for